This data is pulled from the International Coffee Organization and represents the total coffee production by country for the top 10 producers in the world. The top 10 producers are Brazil, Vietnam, Colombia, Indonesia, Ethiopia, Honduras, Uganda, India, Mexico, and Peru. And as you can see, there's only 10 records each year. Then it moves on to the 2011 year. In this data set, we have three columns. First, we have the name of the country. Second, we have the total production in millions of kilograms. Finally, we have the year that the measurement was taken. To insert a pivot table on your data, simply select a cell inside of your table, then go to Insert Pivot Table from Table Range or use the shortcut Alt-N-V-T. When I click it, Excel brings up this dialog, and inside of this dialog, we can see that Excel has automatically selected a range for us. We can also choose a different range if we only want to pivot a part of the table. However, for now, I'm just going to stick with the entire range that Excel selected. Down below, Excel asks you whether you want to insert it in a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. If you were to click OK right now, the new worksheet would just create a new tab and that's where your pivot table would be. However, I'm going to choose existing worksheet and now I have to choose a location. To choose my location, make a simple cell reference to where you want it and then click OK when you're ready. OK, right here is our pivot table placeholder. And when you have this inserted, you should notice that a few things have changed. First, there are two new tabs in the ribbon, Pivot Table Analyze and Design. I like to think of Pivot Table Analyze as the tab you'll use to drill down or strengthen your analysis, where you can insert new features, move or copy your data, and group your data. Design is more of the visual layout of your pivot table where you can change the color scheme, add or remove summary numbers, and change the features shown in your pivot table. The second thing that you should notice is this sidebar. This is called the field list. This may be the single most important thing to familiarize yourself with when you're learning pivot tables. If you are unable to see this while hovering your pivot table, it could be for a couple of reasons. First, you need to be selected on the area of your pivot table. So if I were to click on a cell outside of it, my field list would disappear. But when I click on my pivot table, we see that the field list reappears. It could also be because your field list is hidden. With your pivot table selected, go to Pivot Table Analyze, and you should see a button called Field List. If I try clicking this button, it actually makes my field list disappear. But if yours is not visible right now, try clicking it, and hopefully your field list appears. At the very top of your field list, you should see a list of all of the columns that are inside of your table. We call the data that your pivot table is pivoting off of your source data. So this entire data set is your source data. There are four fields down here on the bottom. There's filters, columns, rows, and values. Filters are just like the Excel filters we've discussed earlier in this course. They're just filters that you're putting on the data. Columns represent the columns that you are placing on your data. Rows represent the rows on your pivot table. And finally, the values are the values that are populated based on your selected rows, columns, and filters. OK, enough talking. Let's try it. Let's first try putting the country inside of the rows by clicking and dragging it down to our rows. Now, the pivot table is listing all of the unique values inside of the country column here. This is another way to get all unique values from a list. If we no longer want this field, we can just click and drag it out, and it's no longer there. But what if we clicked and dragged it into our columns? And now, zooming out a little bit, we see that all the countries are being listed from left to right. Let's actually drag it back into the rows so I can see everything at once, and zoom back in so it's a little bit more visible. OK, let's try clicking and dragging our production numbers into the values. Take a pause here. Something just changed when we dragged and dropped the production field into the values. First, in the values field down here, we see that it no longer says production in millions of kilograms. It says sum of production in millions of kilograms. Why did Excel do that? Well, Excel did that because every single values field must have an aggregator function. For this values field, Excel has defaulted to the sum function. Typically, Excel will default to the sum function for numerical value fields. 
So with the aggregator function now, meaning the sum function, what do these numbers here represent? They represent the sum of all of the years of coffee production by country between 2010 and 2019. In other words, that's how much coffee each country produced during that 10 year period. There are many different ways that we can aggregate or summarize our data in pivot tables. To change the aggregator function of your pivot table, go down to the value section of the field list. Click on the value that you want to change the aggregator function for, and then choose value field settings. This dialog box pops up, and you are able to choose the different ways to summarize your data. Sum, count, average, max, and min should look familiar. Pause the video right now to familiarize yourself with all of the different summary functions. Okay, welcome back. Let's say we wanted to switch it over to average. To do this, you would simply click the average function and then click OK. When we click OK, we see that Excel has reflected our change in the column header. Instead of saying sum of production, it says average of production, and the same down here in our values field. Now, our pivot table represents the average coffee production by country between the years 2010 and 2019. Okay, so we have the average in, but what if we want to view the sum and the average at the same time? We can do this by once again clicking and dragging production into our values. And zooming out, we see that both of the aggregator functions are now contained inside of our pivot table. You can have multiple columns represent multiple values in your pivot table and use different aggregator functions for each one. Now there are two columns, one for average and one for sum. Now let's go ahead and remove our average calculation by clicking and dragging it out. Okay, now let's click and drag our year into the rows. Now we are working with multiple row values. When you do this, something changes in the pivot table. Now the rows are nested, meaning that within each country like Brazil, there's 10 different years. This row here represents the 2010 coffee production by Brazil. Excel defaults to showing all of the rows, but we can expand or contract the view using these minus marks, and then re-expand using the plus marks. Excel defaults to showing all of the rows, but if you want to collapse all of the rows, simply right click on one of the rows, go to Expand Collapse, and choose Collapse Entire Field. Now our table is back to what it looked like before, but we have the capabilities to expand if we want to dive deeper. To re-expand, you simply right-click one of the rows, choose Expand Collapse, and then choose Expand Entire Field. Okay, there's a few other things that I want to point out here. These bolded numbers at the top of each section actually represent subtotals. The subtotal represents the total coffee production in that country, in this case Brazil, from 2010 to 2019. So 33,190 is simply the summation of all of these numbers. If you don't want to see these subtotals, simply select your pivot table, go to pivot table design, choose subtotals, and then do not show subtotals, and we can see that they're no longer there. You might like that report layout better, it just really depends on your use case. Next, if we go to the very bottom of our table, we see that our table includes a grand total, which is a summation of all of the country's coffee production over 10 years. You can also remove this by going to the Design tab, going to Grand Totals, and then choosing Off for Rows and Columns. Now your grand total is removed. Okay, let's go back to the top of our table. While you might want to use the nested rows like we have here, it actually might be easier to use the columns instead. Let's go ahead and drag our country field into the columns. Now, if we zoom out a little bit, this is the exact same data as we had before, but instead of having a nested row, we just have one dimension as a column, our country, and one dimension as a row, our year. This is a very effective way to organize a large sum of data. That's it for this lecture. Great work so far. You're well on your way to becoming a pivot table expert.